Now, New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. It was Hollywood's most glamorous night. We take you to Oscar's red carpet with the big winners and the moment that froze Twitter. But first, another winter storm takes aim on the tri-state area and it could make a mess of the morning commute. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Sandra Bookman. Our 13th winter storm of the season has proven a bit tricky to predict, but we can tell you that it's going to dump several inches of snow on some areas overnight. We already have several school delays and even some closings, and we're scrolling them at the bottom of your screen there. Uh, it's looking like New Jersey is going to see the most snow. In fact, Governor Chris Christie declared a state of emergency. New Jersey Transit will cross honor tickets tomorrow to help make sure everyone can get where they need to go. New York City rolled out the salt trucks. Mayor Bill de Blasio says schools will be open tomorrow, but he suspended alternate side parking rules for Monday. We begin our coverage with meteorologist Lee Goldberg. He's at the Weather Wall tonight. Lee. And Joe and Sandra, the label 13th storm, probably a stretch in many cases. And most schools are going to be open. Be some delays south of New York City. New after the Oscars, winter weather advisories canceled for many. Little to no snow north of New York City, even in the five boroughs, a dusting to an inch or two at most in slippery spots. Significant snow for central and southern New Jersey, especially Ocean County. It's almost your own private storm. We're about to drop close to freezing in New York City. Temperatures are crashing north of the city, and that trend will continue overnight. So any snow that does fall will become powdery late at night into the morning hours. So now you have no winter weather advisories across northern New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, five of New York City, and Long Island. So just some slippery spots here with light snowfall amounts. Once you get into Monmouth and Mercer County, there's an advisory a few inches, but really it's Ocean County for some significant snowfall. So Garden State Parkway, 195, you could have snow-covered roads there. And something to not minimize the very cold temperatures behind this. We all get into that bitter air. Now, in terms of the radar right now, snow is trying to redevelop south of I-78. It's having an awful tough time. It's a struggle. The snow is going to go in this corridor here, so that's where the best accumulation chances are. But north of that, flurries and very light accumulation. So what you need to know is the snow develops over the next few hours, especially south. The accumulations will range from nothing north and west, well north and west, to six inches well south and bitter chill behind this storm. Meteorologist Jeff Smith and I will go through the new timing, uh, the future cast, and the new total map. It's all coming up in AccuWeather in just a few minutes. Joe? Lee, thank you. You heard Lee say at the further south you go, the more snow you're likely to see. And our coverage continues with Eyewitness News reporter Dre Clark. He's in Tom's River, Ocean County, New Jersey. Dre? Yeah, Joe, for most of the evening, it was clear here in Tom's River, but now we had snow within the last 30 minutes and sleet, and it looks like it's coming down uh, again. Uh, and the farther south you go, certainly it's going to get worse. Uh, here in Ocean County, they're expecting you heard Lee say that several inches of snow. That is why the governor uh, declared that state of emergency closing all state offices tomorrow. Also, more than a dozen uh, schools in Monmouth and Ocean County are either canceling school tomorrow or opening up late. Let's take a look at the roads behind me here. For the most part, uh, things are going well, but now the temperature is dropping, or at least it feels that way. The roads have been wet most of the night because, again, we had that rain earlier uh, this evening, so certainly dry. Driving conditions will be hazardous and, of course, very dangerous tomorrow because you may go to sleep tonight and you're not, you're not going to see much at all. But when you wake up tomorrow morning, uh, you'll see that snow uh, on the ground. So certainly you have to be careful. Uh, we have been in contact with Ocean County officials throughout the night. They really have had their crews on standby. They were waiting for this system to come in. Now we know they'll start getting those trucks out there, spreading that salt, and those plows also will be on standby. So again, right now, and it may not look so bad when you look out the window, but when you wake up in the morning, the picture will be a whole lot different. For now, we're live in Tom's River. Dre Clark, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Dre. There may be delayed openings and closings in New Jersey, but New York City school students will have class. Uh, we can safely say there will be school tomorrow, so I want all parents to know there will be school tomorrow. Uh, Mayor de Blasio was criticized for keeping the schools open in past storms. The Philadelphia School District, by the way, canceled all classes tomorrow. And we will be on the air a half hour earlier in the morning. Eyewitness News will begin at 4 a.m. with continuous weather and traffic updates. Overseas now, the brink of disaster. Those words tonight from Ukrainian leaders who put the military on high alert after Russian troops move into Crimea. Secretary of State John Kerry will head to the region on Tuesday. Eyewitness News reporter Tim Fleischer has more on the growing crisis. The voice of protest, 
decrying Russia's occupation, filled the street outside the Russian consulate of New York on the Upper East Side. In contrast, a world away, rising tensions as pro-Russia demonstrators viciously beat supporters of the new Ukrainian government. Many, including children, left bloodied. Elsewhere, Russian fervor is fueled with Russia's unanimous parliament vote authorizing military force in Ukraine. It's one people. Belarus, Russia, Ukrainian, it's one people. President Obama is warning Russia, though, against military action. There will be costs for any military intervention in Ukraine. New York lawmakers point to different deal. strategies. They are economic, diplomatic, and geopolitical, and we should make sure that the Russians know we will not hesitate to use them. Ukraine's ambassador to the United Nations, Yuri Sergeyev, speaking on Russian language radio in Brighton Beach, believes strong steps need to be taken immediately. Russia should withdraw uh, all the troops and put Black Sea Fleet back to their location. And earlier, a much larger protest by Ukrainian supporters gathering at Bryant Park. Their message that Ukrainians want a free, democratic, and independent country. Protesters loud and vocal now, but watching closely the developments in the coming days. Reporting from the Upper East Side, Tim Fleischer, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Hollywood's biggest night, the Academy Awards just handed out. You saw it right here on Channel 7, 12 Years a Slave, one of the big mm -hmm. winners tonight, but there were plenty of memorable moments. We have several reports. Kimberly Richardson checked out some Oscar parties here in our area, but first, we go to entertainment reporter Sandy Kenyon. He's live tonight in Hollywood. Sandy. Thank you, Joe, and good evening, Sandra. It really was quite thrilling, wasn't it? Even though there were no surprises in the major categories. Thrilling because you had one film, Gravity, getting award after award, but then Oscar favorite prevailed. But it did go long, and it did go all ceremony long, and you had to wait until the very end to learn the winner of Best Picture. The suspense over which film would be called the year's Best Picture went down to the final minutes when the favorite earned the top prize. And we all get to stand up here tonight because of one man who brought us all together to tell that story, and that is the indomitable Mr. Steve McQueen. 12 Years a Slave also earned an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay. As expected, Lupita Nyong'o. Let this golden statue, may it remind me and every little child that no matter where you're from, your dreams are valid. Despite these high-profile wins, Gravity won by far the most awards, a total of seven, including two for Alfonso Cuaron, who becomes the first Latino in Oscar history to win in the directing category. And I want to thank Gravity because for many of us involved in this film, it was definitely a transformative experience. Host Ellen DeGeneres kept the show moving and the stars fed. No pressure, only a billion people watching. Whatever you feel is right. <laughs> when Kate Blanchett, who was heavily favored to win Best Actress for starring as Blue Jasmine, did not go home disappointed. As random and as subjective as this award is, um, it means a great deal. Um, in a year of extraordinary, yet again, extraordinary performances by women. Among the men, two who were expected to win found themselves collecting Oscars for their work in the same film. Jared Leto brought his mother when he won for Dallas Buyers Club. I love you, Mom. Thank you for teaching me to dream. His co-star, Matthew McConaughey, went home a winner for Best Actor. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Of course, two more awards to tell you about. Frozen took home a trophy as Best Animated Film. And what other tune was going to win Best Song than Let It Go from the movie Frozen? Reporting from Oscar's red carpet, I'm Sandy Kenyon, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Back to you 
Joe and Sandra. Thank you very much, Sandy. Well, social media played a big role in this year's awards. In fact, many of you may have been part of Oscar and Twitter history. After Ellen snapped this star-studded selfie, she challenged Twitter reusers to retweet it. More than a million people did, making it the most retweeted picture ever. In fact, at one point, Twitter even froze because of so much activity. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson watched the awards with New Yorkers. <laughs> she joins us from a different red carpet, this one on the Upper East Side. Kimberly? Oh, and it is just as fabulous. Things here at Danielle are just now wrapping up. This is actually the official Oscar party of the entire East Coast. But as far as unofficial goes, one particular bash stood out. Welcome to the party. It's a happily small group, but we're having a good time. A group of friends who has gotten together on this specific night for more than 20 years, the thing that unites them... She's a Hollywood legend. ...the Academy Awards. I inherited it because everyone moved to the suburbs with their kids, and now they're back, and I'm the one that's been in the city, so I've absorbed this. Host Jeffrey Osborne transforms his Gramercy Park apartment into the perfect setting for a viewing party, complete with ballots, though they are buddies, they are competitive, keeping close watch on Jeffrey, who has walked away with the top prize several years in a row. So it now has become a grudge. Everybody comes here on a certain grudge level to try to say, come on, Osborne. It's an eclectic group who loves film. She's about 80. She are you kidding? She looks good. She looks awesome. And coming together to see where ultimately Oscar ends up. We all, through the year, keep track of who's seen what. So it's sort of an ongoing conversation. It's not just tonight. Ah, and Jeffrey tells me not only do those who come to his party fill out these ballots, but those who can't make it in person actually email in their top picks. Job well done. For now, we're live on the Upper East Side, Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kimberly. And be sure to stay tuned after.